Hello friends, welcome to this uh, new session of Soil Science and Technology and uh, in this session we will be starting a new topic that is uh, soil classification and taxonomy and uh, let us start this new uh, topic and uh, in this session we will be covering this following concepts. First of all, we will be covering why classification is needed and secondly, we will be discussing what are the different developments of classification systems and then we will be dif uh, you know discussing different classes and uh, we will be finally giving the description of individual classes. So, always it comes to our mind that uh, why we need a soil classification and taxonomy. Well, you know that classification always allows scientists to accurately identify individual soil wherever they are. And secondly, taxonomy provides basic understanding about the components of different soils which is necessary for effective decision making about conservation and sustainable use. So, to get a holistic idea about the soil physicochemical process says you need to have a complete idea about its classification and in which group it belongs, what are their characteristics and how it differs from other soil groups. So, that is why we need soil classification and taxonomy just like any other organism in the world. So, what are the purposes of soil classification? There are five major purposes of soil classification. First of all, to organize our knowledge. Secondly, to remember properties of the objects. Thirdly, to bring out and understand relationship among individuals and classes of the populations, to learn new relationship among the groups and establish groups of the objects in a manner useful for practical and applied purposes. So, what I have told you in the previous slide, it reiterates is the same that means, you have to organize your knowledge of soil with the help of this soil classification system and it will help you to identify and remember the properties of soil and it will help you to understand what are the relationship among these individual soils and what are the classes of the population and it will help you to identify new relationships among the groups and finally, it will establish groups of objects in a matter. So, it will give you some measurable, it will, it will give you idea of a soil in terms of soil some measurable property. So, that is most important. So, let us see the historical development of soil classification. Uh, so, earlier system of soil classification there are a couple of types I mean five different types I have mentioned here. Uh, first of all you know economic classification, then physical classification, chemical classification, geological classification and physiographic classification. And this economic classification mainly uh, you know classified the soil based on tax purposes and other revenue purposes. At this physical classification basically classified the soil based on soil texture and structure which had direct link to the soil uh, productivity. So, it basically uh, you know classified the soil based on soil texture which had direct relationship with soil fertility. The chemical classification was based on the fact that soil can be divided into groups based on their chemical characteristics such as acid soils, 
sodic soils. So, the acidic soils are those soils which have uh, pH of value of less than 7, whereas sodic soils are uh, those soils which are having a high concentration of sodium ions and both of them are problematic soil, we will discuss them in details later on. So, the chemical classification based on chemically dividing the soil into certain groups. Now, geological classification as I have already discussed in my previous lectures uh, you know of uh, soil formation that uh, based on the location of the parent material, uh, we divided the soil into you know uh, sedentary soil and transported soil. So, geological classification was based on the location of parent materials mainly, whereas physiographic classification based on different physio you know physical landforms where soil basically occurs. So, uh, physiographic some of the examples of physio you know uh, physiographic classes where uh, you know mountain soils. and so on and so forth, plain land soil and so on and so forth. So, all this classification was uh, you know all these each of this classification was based upon certain criteria. Now, problem with certain criteria is it is not holistic. So, based on the chemical characteristics you cannot divide all the soils of the world. So, you need to develop some kind of holistic classification system which can uh, you know take into account all the soil properties. So, that is why people uh, you know the soil scientists started to thinking uh, started to think about what are what could be the most appropriate way to classify the soil. So, uh, as far as the soil classification is concerned the first classification modern in modern modern classification was given by a Russian scientist named uh, Dokuchev in the year 1870 and uh, he is considered as the father of soil pedology and he was the one who first considered soil as a natural body. Before that soil was considered as a weathered mantle of rocks. So, he is the first one who established the notion that soil can be considered as a natural body. Now, as you know that uh, soil is highly heterogeneous into the field and uh, some soil contains some uh, profiles and some soil those profiles may not be present in other soils. So, to compare the soil or to describe the soil uh, we need to have certain kind of uh, you know certain kind of measurable entity. So, Dokuche first said that soil should be uh, you know soil should be considered as a natural body. So, it, he divided the soil into basic three categories, one is called normal, another is called transitional, another is abnormal. Now, normal soil, uh, sorry, so the normal soil, now we know this normal soil as zonal soils. So, earlier he given the name normal soil, so normal soil basically formed uh, due to the influence of climate and vegetation and transitional soils now they are known as interzonal soils they are more developed them as zonal. So, before that we discuss as zonal soils. So, abnormal third category was abnormal soil now we now we term those abnormal soil as as zonal soils. Now, as zonal soils are very poorly developed soils. So, you cannot see any well defined horizonation in those soils. So, these soils are called abnormal soils. So, transitional soils are more developed than azonal soils and formation of these as you know transitional soils are controlled by local factors like parent material and topography. As you know these are important factors of soil formation as we have already discussed the Jenny's soil formation equation or formula. So, Dokuche first divided these, you know, Dokuche first divided soil into three, three categories. 
and you see that the classification which is proposed by Dokoche was based on climate and vegetation. So, based on uh, so that is why it is called genetic system of soil classification. And again this approach was based on principle of soil genesis. So, role of vegetation on climate was very much important and that is why this system given by Dokuchev was known as uh, genetic system of soil classification. So, before we go to the next classification system, it needs to dev, you know we need to we need to discuss some important terms. So, one of these term is called pedon. Now, as I have already told you that soil is a natural body and in the landscape one soil differs from other soil in a you know in a you know uh, because soil is very much heterogeneous. So, we need some basic unit of soil classification or we need some smallest sampling unit based on that we can differentiate one soil at a particular point to other soil at a other at uh, you know to, uh, to another soil uh, from other point. So, then this term pedon came. So, pedon is basically basic unit of soil classification and it is the smallest sampling unit that displays the full range of properties uh, of uh, which are characteristics of a particular soil and obviously, one pedon can be described by this imaginary three dimensional uh, you know three dimensional uh, structure and uh, as you can see all these individual horizons are present here which you have already discussed in the last class. So, remember that pedon is a three dimensional entity and it is the smallest sampling unit that displays the full range of properties characteristics of a particular soil and generally a pedon occupies uh, from you know generally varies from 1 to 10 square meter of land area. So, now let us discuss another important term uh, called polypedon. So, a soil unit in a land polypedon is basically a soil unit in the landscape which is usually consists of a group of very similar pedons. So, pedon is singular term whereas, whether there are several pedons uh, occurs you know in a very close proximity collectively we call them polypedon. Now, remember that polypedon is also known as soil individual. So, polypedon is sufficient size to be recognized as a landscape component. So, as you can see here uh, a poly you know this is a landscape and from this landscape we can take out a individual section which is basically a polypedon or soil individual which is basically a you know collection of individual pedons and from that we can uh, we can magnify or we can segregate individual pedon which is a three dimensional body. So, a polypedon or soil individual is the same kind of thing. However, a polypedon is basically the combine you know collection of similar pedons. All right. So. <laughs> So, Dokuchev gave the genetic system of classification which was the first classification system, but there were a couple of problems. First of all, <coughs> it was in uh, Russian language and uh, people were skeptic about this type of genetic classification. So, it was first the scientist called Marbut in United States so USDA uh, United States Develop, uh, Department of Agriculture who gave who adopted the you know the proposed system of Dokuchev and he gave a system called morphogenetic system. And this system is based on both soil morphology and soil genesis. So, that is why it is called 
morphogenetic system and he introduced the first to introduce the concept of great soil groups and he gave the classification based on their own intrinsic property as I have told you it is a morphogenetic system. Now morphology is basically showing their own intrinsic property. So, these were considered as important aspects for classifying the soil and remember that the high highest class category was divided into two classes. He gave the name pedalfers and pedocals. Now, pedalfers are basically aluminum and iron accumulation. Those soils which are highly leached soils due to high weathering and you will see aluminum and iron accumulation is there. So, he divided he, he, he gave the name pedalfers for those soils. Another class he gave it is called pedocals which is basically uh, you know soils of arid and semi arid region and they show the you know calcium carbonate accumulation. So, uh, this is called Marf Marbut's morphogenetic system, but this system was based on assumption of soil genesis which could not find places for most of the soil. So, that is uh, that was the major drawback for Marbut's morphogenetic system. So, Marbut's morphogenetic system was later revised by Baldwin, Kellogg and Thorpe three scientists and later. So, they also modified this uh, genetic system and morphogenetic system. So, they emphasize the Marbut system and return back to the zonality concept. Now, zonality concept you remember given by uh, that by Dokuchev in their genetic system of soil classification. So, Baldwin and their associate moved back to this zonality concept and they emphasized on soil as a three dimensional body and they introduced the concept of soil family between great soil group and soil series. We will we'll discuss this uh, name later on and the concept of great soil group was further revised. So, these soil family, soil series and uh, you know great soil group we will discuss this in later on when we will discuss we will be discussing the soil classification, uh, soil taxonomy. Now, but still this system was also not completely based on soil measurable properties. So, all these systems starting from uh, from Dokuchev genetic system, then Marbut's uh, morphogenetic system and then Baldwin acid genetic system, all these systems they did not highly rely on measurable soil properties. So, that was the major drawback of all these systems. And so, the, the uh, Baldwin and other associate they classified the soil into three categories. One is zonal or normal soil. Now, normal soil it was the name given by Dokuchev, then intrazonal soils and azonal soils. Now, zonal soils are basically the soils where you can see the in you know uh, the dominance of climate for soil genesis. So, it is an important and soil in the you know is in equilibrium with the climate and vegetation. So, these no soils are called zonal soils or normal soils. Now, azonal soils are too young, dry and sandy to have developed into zonal soils. So, these are basically similar to uh, the earlier abnormal soils given by Dokuchev. And finally, intrazonal soils which are uh, you know we, which are intermediate between zonal soils and azonal soils. So, these soils shows the impact of local conditions like topography and parent material and uh, you know in this soil salts, wetness and limestone bedrocks all these overwhelms the soil genesis. So, these are the three major classes given by Baldwin and their associates and uh, let me show you couple of examples of these soils. So, uh, as you can see here uh, these are some examples of zonal soils or normal soils. So, this is an example of podzol which develops in the cool climate and in the coriferous forest 
and uh, this is cerosene which is uh, desert region soil or desert soils. Uh, this is uh, lateritic soil which uh, occurs in red and uh, you know these are basically red tropical soils and this is called brunisms which are tall grass prairie soils. So, all these soils represents the zonal soils or normal soils which shows the uh, which shows the influence of climate for their soil genesis. For example, Podzol shows the importance of their uh, cool climate and then laterite shows the importance of warm and humid climate and uh, these desert soils or cerosems uh, shows the impact of this hot and arid climate and uh, these uh, brunisms they shows the impact of vegetations. So, all these are showing the impact of soil uh, you know climate and uh, vegetations. Uh, now, let us see some examples of intrazonal soils. These are some intrazonal soil examples are renzinas which are shallow to limestone bedrocks. You can see these are two examples here and glay soils are wet soils uh, and glaying is a property of wet soil and finally, peat soil which is an organic soil. So, these intrazonal soils are dominated by the local characteristics as you can see here the renzinas are dominated by the limestone which is a local property and then glay soils are dominated by wetness which is another local property and peat soils is dominated by uh, high organic matter which is also a local property. So, these are the examples of intrazonal soils. Finally, let us see the azonal soils or abnormal soils. So, these are two young soils to be developed into a true zonal soil. For example, as you can see uh, dry sandy soil as you can see here and shallow to bedrock soils and alluvial soils. So, all these are young parametrial as you can see. So, you on all these soils you will not see uh, these are shallow to bedrock soils and this is a dry sandy soil. So, these soils you will not see a proper uh, you know soil horizonation or in other words soil horizons are not easily visible. So, there is no properly developed uh, master horizons. So, that is why they are called young soils or poorly developed soils. So, these are examples of azonal soils. So, what are the major limitations of the genetic systems? So, the major limitations were the two highest categories were defined in genetic terms not on soil properties and the great soil group concept was qualitative again this is not quantitative. In definitions more emphasis was given to properties of virgin soil which got modified by the use. And the nomenclature was evolved for many languages and it was very much difficult to name the integrates. So, these were some inherent problems or drawbacks of the genetic system that is why there was a pressing need for development of a more scientific and more uh, you know comprehensive system of soil classification. And this was given in the year 1975 by United States Development uh, Department of Agriculture in collaboration with uh, National Cooperative Soil Survey under the leadership of uh, G. D. Smith and this is called soil taxonomy and this is the most widely used soil classification system nowadays which is followed in uh, almost 50 countries. So, this soil taxonomy again given by United States Department of Agriculture and this is called a comprehensive system of soil classification because it has got several properties. First of all, the, it is system based on the measured or observed soil property. Earlier the properties were qualitative in nature, however now, now uh, the soil taxonomy based on measurable soil property. It help you know it based on the surface and subsurface diagnostic horizons. 
and it considers the moisture and temperature regime of the soil. It considers color, texture, structure, it considers uh, you know it considers uh, organic matter, clay, iron, aluminum oxide, silicate clay, salts, pH, base saturation, soil depth. So, it is a holistic system which consider all the important soil properties for distributing soil into some homogeneous groups. So, if you see soil taxonomy, it is a kind of, uh, it is a hierarchical system of soil classification and uh, you will see there are six different levels. At the bottom, we call it soil series, uh, at the bottom we call it soil series followed by soil family followed by subgroup, followed by grade group, then suborder and order. So, the lowest category is soil series and the highest category is soil order. And as you can see, there are 12 soil orders which you can see in the soil, we will discuss them later on one by one. So, similarly, just like any organism can be uh, you know classify based on their kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus and species, any soil can be classified based on these, uh, based on these class, based on these levels. And as you can see there are total 19,000 uh, series and 8,000 family, 1,400 subgroups, 250 grade groups, suborder and 63 suborders and 12 orders. So, any soil can be differentiated into or any soil can be grouped into using this hierarchical system of soil uh, taxonomy. So, let us uh, wrap up here and uh, from in the next session we will be discussing uh, different, um, uh, different properties which the soil taxonomy considers for uh, classifying the soils, what are the epipedons, what are the endopedons and what is the soil moisture regime, what, uh, what is uh, soil temperature regime and, and then what are different soil orders and what are their properties. So, we will be discussing them in the next session. Thank you.